Welcome, welcome. We're starting a new stream. I hope everyone had a good weekend. Today, we're going to build an application in Haskell. Now, I'm not sure how far we can get in two hours, but we'll see. All right. So, if you all remember, for those who followed my Thursday stream, we talked about the integrated Pascal Haskell platform. And so that's this site. I'll share the link. Voila. Uh, thank you, Yuwoka. So, I already did the installation as to not waste time during the stream. And um, let's see. So, get started. Fully managed, professor use. There was a. Um, next install. So, I already did the install. So, I ran this command because I have a Mac. So that gave me nix and then, but this part I didn't do yet. No, no, I did install IHP already. So that's fine. And now it's time to start our first project. So it's mostly GUI based. Uh, So we'll build stuff with the GUI. I'm keeping this open so we can at least have a look at the code, but it could be that I switch the width. So that makes more sense. Oh, why is it skipping half of the thing? Okay, that makes sense. So, HP new, we're not gonna create a post, we're gonna add a to do. So it needs to install some stuff. Okay. Okay. It's barely missing stuff. Just fine. Just install them. I was hoping most of it would be installed with the uh, original install, but Apparently you need to do it multiple times. And now of course I don't know how long this will take. So 10 to 15 minutes. Ooh. And then all the packages will already be there. So the next time it's faster. 15 minutes. Had I known, I would have done this before the, the stream as well. You can always see there's a to-do. That's good. See Haskell files, YAML files, Nix files, Cabal files. And you have your application, the database stuff, reload, controller, the helper, some config and some static files. Well, while this is installing, let's have a look. So we're gonna look at the base. There we go. So it adds its own git ignore. That's nice. A stylish Haskell configuration file. Not sure what this does, but I guess it helps with the uh, GUI based app. Then there's the Cabal file. So Cabal's part of Haskell. Hmm. 
There is apparently an extension for this. Haskell syntax hiling. That's interesting. So it's 300, five stars. That's a lot less. Legacy. Okay, let's go with the first one. So it gives some uh, syntax highlighting for Haskell. Additionally, support for Gobble files. Okay, then at least we'll be able to uh, read what it is. Okay, terminals installing stuff, that's good. So we're at the Cabal. So it gives a name. Oh, so this is like um, info on the app. Interesting. It doesn't automatically give the name that I gave to the uh, project setup. Project created, happy coding. You can now start the server. Okay. So that's going to do. Let's first continue with this. So the cabal file. It has some built dependencies, default language, and some extensions it loads. Okay, then your Nix file. I have no idea what this part is. YAML file. It has the bio stuff. And a Haskell file. So your main. So the web application. Ah, I see. There's now a web as well. That is probably the GUI. That's nice. Uh, make file. Okay, it's for static setup. And I start, which is to run the server. Okay, now let's continue. So I added to do. And it contains auto generated files and directories. So, config with the config hs, configuration for the framework and your navigation, then a nix config, which is here, and that has for the nix package manager, makes sense. Haskell packages. So the dependencies, there's nothing there yet. Application is your domain logic. Okay, makes sense. Application schema is the model and database files. So it should be empty. Same with the fixtures. Then web controller is for the web application. So technically this is everything you're gonna see to build our stuff. All right. So it has the view, the types, then the static files, images, CSS, and JavaScript. Also makes sense. The .ghci, the Haskell interpreter. That's this one. Okay. And git ignore. The cabal and the setup is for the backup package manager. And a make file and then default next. Okay. So we're in there. Start. Gonna ignore this uh, thing right now. Okay, let me quickly change up the way it is. Whoa, that changed to a completely different monitor. That normally never happens. That's better. And this one on the right, on the left. So it's running. 
apparently you also need to start the database server. So we did this. So it's now running. Development server will automatically launch the built-in IDE, which is this. Cool. And can be stopped. Localhost tooling is at 801. So at 8000, we have the, yeah, the application. That's good. Um, okay, that makes sense. It also starts the Postgres SQL database. So that's good. Then data structure, schema modeling. So they're gonna work with um, block, but we're gonna do to-dos. And I'm gonna start very simple. And then as we get further, I'll try to build up more to what we need. So they're gonna do a post. Add a table to do. Did I like say something special? So to do has an ID. Hope you can read that because it's actually very small. At least this part is. Uh, so we have an ID. We have our literal to do, which is a text. No default, great column, uh, a completed. I didn't really think of how to build this on the front, so default is false. Okay. And then created that. Wait, actually, do they speak of something like that? So... These are just posts. IHP has built-in GUI-based schema designer, which we're doing now, and will be used in the following sections of the tutorial. We quickly build DLL statements for your database schema without removing all the Postgres syntax and data types. Just a GUI type. So everything we have comes in here. That's nice. Uh, so it updates it live and we can always go straight in here. That makes sense. So if you need something very complicated, we can do it here. Okay. Actually, you know what? I said we kept it simple. So this is it. To-dos, you add a to-do, and you say if it's completed or not. That's nice. So we did all this, it's fine. Next, we need to make sure our table is imported into the local one. So this is what we have. To load the table, we click update DB. And then here we can see it's doing that. So we now have fixtures. I think DB is updated. Post table has been created. Let's quickly connect to our database and see everything is correct. Ah, uh, we'll see it when we're doing it. Record types. So we have a type post. In our case, type to do. So that's something the framework provides for us. And then you have a, for example, a post. In our case, we would have a to-do, 
bit to do and completed false. Definition new type, description type for it. To dig deeper in a, open the schema designer, right click a table and click show generated Haskell code. Ah, interesting. So we have a to-do, which has an ID, text, which is the to-do, and a bool completed, and then some meta. Record to input value, type to-do is to-do, from our to-do, get table name, multiply table name, primary key is the UUID. We have a filter on the primary to-do. Filter primary key onto to do's. Okay, you can create a to do. And you have a can update. Okay, that's nice. So, what do they do next? The app controller and the views. So it follows the MVC, model view controller structure. That's good. So controls and actions are used to deal with incoming requests. Controller belongs to an application. Default application is called web. That's why all controller and views are located here. So in this part. Hmm. Okay. Your whole application can consist of multiple sub-applications. Typically, your production app will need, for example, an admin backend application next to the default web application. Inside the dev server, click on code channel, and then you can see everything that can be generated. So that's here. So application, script, mail, View, action and controller. Okay, click on controller, enter post and click preview. So, to do's, preview. See what they say. We'll show you all the files which are going to be created or modified. Take a look and click generate when ready. generated all the need for usual crud here's how the new post page looks like so for our to do's we would get a controller to do's which has because I don't know Haskell I need to figure this out so we have a to do's action which is the query to fetch and it renders an index view it also has a new to-do, which creates a new record, then a show for one, fetch to-do ID, into to-do and show view. Does it say somewhere that it's like to-dos? Yeah, no. Doesn't really say, right? I hear, add to-do, but then how does it know here Edit, update, build to, if valid, write to do, do. I have to figure out what this means. And then you have a new to do, new record add to do. For that to do, build the to do. Okay, let's just generate it. And then we can look at it here where it might be easier to have full screen. So you also have a new root for those to do's controller types ah and here it says your to do id is an id of to do same for these so this is probably like a check right 
on controller adds the to do's. Parse the route. And then we have all the different views. So uh, overview, I think. So index everything. New one. To show one. Okay. Generate. So we have our to do's. I thought this was like hidden in the GUI, but apparently it's just two dots. Did they explain what or how? Yeah, they do. But let's first look at slash to do's. It's not found. sensitive and I get here that wasn't found it's cool so to do's what do we have so we have types web types it's this and a new data structure was created post control so we have a to do's controller list so that's list that's the get new show okay create which creates one edit update and delete so it's just a uuid wrapped with a new type okay then the controller implementation, so to do's. We have a bunch of imports, our views, and a preload. Prelude, sorry. Gives controller helpers and also framework specific functions. Also imports all its views, that's normal. A controller instance index action so that's this one it's called when opening posts first it fetches all the posts from the database and then passes them to the view so this is the query add to do fetch them all and then render the index view and this is just shorthand for posts in our case to do new one so slash new post so it's always this so new to do show to do edit to do so whatever is in front of the action is a burn a or root creates a new one passes it to the new view which is defined here also funny so it's index but you say index view and it automatically knows oh, okay you have the show where it fetches a certain item to true the to, to-do ID Okay, and then you have the edit and the update. Now the update is much more complicated. Deals with the update request for a specific post. As usual, we pattern match on the post ID, fetch it. So we fetch the to do and we put it in to do and then build to do is a helper function which is here so you give it a to do and you fill ah okay so this is how you fill in the to do and the flag the fill call inside build post reads the title and body attributes from the browser request and fills them into the post 
so that means if your form has the same naming as your um, parameters in your entity, your variables, then it automatically reads it in them. That's nice. And it's also the place for the validation logic. It's cool. So you have one action that is reused. So it's kind of like having a process form uh, in the Symfony framework. So what we usually do is have a process one that this works for post and put. And you just give it the method and then it knows whether it needs to update or not. At least that's how we do it. Or I do it. And then if valid, so that's still part of this. So if valid returns either the posts, so in our case to do, left post means that the title or body did not pass. So you get the edit view again. And right post or right to do in our case means everything was set on the post without errors. And the edit view automatically tells about the errors. Interesting. In the success case, write post. We save the updated post to the database with update record. That's this. Set a success message. And redirect back to the edit. Why would you go back to the edit? We'll have to figure that out then you have the create so the create actually does somewhat the same so you create a new record the add to do you take it you build it if valid checks it left means strong goes back to the new view if it's correct it goes to the right to do i'm not sure what this do is oh yeah okay so it's the same which creates a record, sets the rec, and then goes to the to-do's action. So this one goes straight back to the overview. And then the, 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 and the delete is actually pretty straightforward. So you fetch it, you delete the records, set the success message, and redirect. That makes sense. Then you have the roots. And it has the instance auto root, so it does it automatically. Cool. And then later we we'll see how it works. Then we have the views, so it's under web views to do's uh, show data show view show view. Does the same here okay so we can see just a data definition so so view show view it's this part html like syntax inside the html function is hsx code which is defined here interesting structure so you open it hsx pipe and then you write your stuff And then I guess because it's one, you just see that you either have to do or probably complete it. Similar to Rex JCX, I don't know React. You can write HTML code as usual there. Everything inside this block is also type checked and converted at compile time. Okay, now we're going to do some coding. But they're working with the post. So I'm going to see what they do and try to build something quite similar like this. So they're going to build something new. 
Okay, let's do that as well. We're going to add a to-do. Build a to-do at Haskell. Wow. Anyway. That is so crazy bad. <laughs> but okay, we have it. It works. And indeed, we get somewhat the same stuff. So let's improve the show view. So this part is just this. So we have to do's, which is, I guess, this. to do no this makes sense we're in this part anyway so we're still changing the show right now it's the headline show post show to do and the actual post body is just a dump okay so this is actually your entire model and it just dumps it. Oh, okay. So you do get title post. Okay, so technically you can do get to do to do. And we don't need this part. I don't have the body and I'm not sure how it works with a checkbox but I can do it differently Diff. Um, complete it let's do it like this for now until I can figure out how I can do all of this stuff like a checkbox and stuff like that so it's get Completed. Is it meant to have like camel? I the so it exists to do and closer diff. Okay. Show completed false. Okay. Back to to do's. display all the posts so we're going to index okay. render to do and here you have the stuff okay so they're gonna make the post get ID posts show to do action Okay, so they just take this and then, for example, do um, get to do, to do, and then this can go. Wait. Now, I'm not sure how the if works. Because else we could like build in the uh, checkboxes and stuff. But we'll do that later when we play. And first, let's see how far we can go. So we have this. Then we need to add validation. Let's make sure every has a title. Post.hs. To do It's in the build. Okay. Pipe. Now uh, these are things I not use a lot, at least not pipe. So validate field. Now there's no autocomplete. 
That sucks. To do non empty. I wonder if you have like auto completion for Haskell. That would work so nice. And so now if we do new, field cannot be empty. Okay, that works. Ah. So you have like a list of all the validation stuff. So we have non empty. If valid for branching. Okay. Non empty as email. I wish you just have a clean list. Like these are the things we have. Oh, well, we're actually looking at them now, but there's no overview. That makes it difficult. It would be nice if on top it would say like, these are the ones we have. So you can check on phone number, certain ranges, less than, greater than, max length, min length, colors, different types. Cool, just regular colors and your belt. And is in list. Okay, that's nice. Timestamps. Let's add a timestamp to do exactly that. So, features. Our fixtures doesn't look like that. Schema. Ah. Now it looks like that. It's probably they forgot a step somewhere. Okay, and then share your fixtures. We want to update. Okay, let's add a new created ad column. So created ad. It automatically detects what it is. That's nice. So great. Then there's some weird stuff here, but okay. And then we can error. Okay. So that's because we didn't update the DB. It's fine. Update. If you now open it, should work. Yep. We also need to save it to the fixtures, which already changed. So this way you can easily create fixtures for your app. That's nice. So you just fill stuff in and it works. Can you load? No. Uh. So you can also do it manually. That's fine. And we're gone. Now we can order the post by our new create ad field. So we go to post controller. I didn't have it open. Ah, yes, to do, not post. And then the first one. So query, add to do. And then we're gonna add some stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, order by descending. 
hashtag created that. Okay. Let's also show it in the show. I wish it had autocomplete. Apparently it doesn't. It's probably because I don't have the right uh, extension. Or I need an extra one. So that's nice. You can do so. Okay. Hashtag created at for the to do. And then give it this time ago. Something like five minutes ago below the tile. Two minutes ago. So where does this part come from? This time ago. It's a helper, use a bit of JavaScript. In case you want to show the absolute time, just use date time instead of time ago. So if I use date time. Indeed. Okay. Right now our post can only be plain text by adding support from Markdown. Now the thing is, I don't have... Well, actually, we can. Eh? We can. So, add column, description, is a text. Can you move it up? No. Damn. Update. What is this? Did I say it cannot be known? Not ball. Update. Fixtures. I'm getting a whole lot of mess in there. There's nothing left. It's probably because I changed it so hard. Um, to do. Yeah. Because it was changed pretty. Oh. So if you if you change stuff you have to do it everywhere. Alright, that's no biggie. So new Let's first look at the controller then. We don't do anything special except here. So I can do description. Now we have that. And technically I said it no it could be nullable, so that's fine. Um, then in the new I need a text field description. That's also good. And then edit. Also need the description. Save. And then in the show. Let's end it as well. Like this. Cool. So build a Haskell to do app. Use hp to sorry guys my typing is way off it's, it's because cables are running here i really need a arm for the microphone but anyway use ihp to build a to do app in haskell without prior 
has gold. Knowledge. And it's not complete yet. Create to do. And then let's do safety fixtures. And there it is. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so you can see, no Haskell experience. And it goes pretty fast to get into it. And I don't think I forgot anything. What did they use for their description? They're gonna use something else. Uh, description. Did we do it before? It's higher. No, it's also text. Yeah, just text. Okay. Now where were we? Foundation is done. Oh, they also have like one line. Okay. Here we are. Markdown. So we haven't even touched any of this. Hey, huge Peters. Yeah, it's really nice that you can build stuff and then just learn Haskell on the go. And it's actually what they also said on their homepage. Like it's for them an easy way to build stuff, but it also teaches you Haskell because you can just look at the code. It's nice. It's really cool. And then it helps that they have a nice uh, getting started stuff. So that's cool. So we need a markdown parser. Open the default Nix. It's this one. And append mark to Haskell depths. So that's this one. Stop the development server and then make B. Okay, so make B dot env. Okay. Is that normal? It feels like that's not what should happen. Is it? Um, we'll see. Start. I wonder if it's faster now. Should type Nix shell first. Like when I do the make. When should I type it? Did I miss something here? Mm, they don't speak about it. Ah, oh, maybe start does it. I think so, since they're not not really saying it. It's doing a lot of stuff again, so I'm guessing the start does it. <laughs> but the start still takes a long time. But then again, I think ideally you don't need to run this every five minutes, so... Cable management.
They didn't talk about good chicks. I can recheck. So they install the next environment. Oh, no, sorry. They first do this. So that's for Nix, the package manager. Then they install the IHP. And then that's it. And then it's like start, which where we are now. Which doesn't mention the uh, Kashyx. But I do see, wait, where was it? Maybe in editors and tooling or somewhere here. Because technically we're still just in this part. So there's still lots to go through. So Kashyx. Let me quickly Google it while it's still running. Never have to build software more than once. You built your software project. Continuous integration builds project again. And to user deploy. Uh, here's the M mark. So it is uh, doing it, downloading it, installing it, adding it. What's uh, digitally induced? Ah, it's their stuff. I see. Well, I can try it. Um, if they have, if they say like stop it again, I'll do this thing. I'll run the command. I saved it. But this is indeed taking a while. What I was expecting though is that a lot of stuff would be in an application but apparently it's mostly in a web except for the database stuff but it's probably because we're like working on this very easy stuff Are we actually going in circles? Internal dot type. Is it doing the same thing multiple times? This is confusing. What are you doing? Oh, 
Oh, we're only halfway through the stream. Time flies. Okay, now it's something do doing something else. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's not stuck. Yes. If you're not used to it, you could feel like that. Should have probably taken the break right here. <laughs> anyway. It's only a two hour stream, so it's fine. Oh, if it asked, then I probably said yes. <laughs> I just say yes. You want to use this? Yes. Want to install this? Yes. I can't remember if that was in there. Probably was. Also need a new chair. Feels like mine is gonna break down. IKEA. Oh, here we are. So it reopens. It's fine. Server started. And then here it is. Okay. We can continue. So we have the M mark. And then we have to integrate it in the show view. Okay, that makes sense. So you have the show, then you import qualified. Text mark yes. And then the get body post and we give it to the random markdown. So another thing that would be the description. And then the markdown. Cool. Oh wait, I think I skipped something. So we change this. This pipes the body fill through the function render markdown. Of course, we also have to define the function now. Ah, so it wasn't there yet. So it's probably like here. Render markdown text equals text. So you give it text with the pipe. And then you have like, this is what you get. And then we even pipe this one used to typing it like this so mmr.parse and this is probably our default I guess so with this the function does nothing so it returns the text then we have the parse and render so we parse it and ah okay so the empty string it's the file name of the markdown file. We don't have one, so we pass the empty string. Now open the web app and take a look at the blog post. You'll see something like this. So in our case, that would be this. That's not what we're getting. <laughs> Am I putting it in the wrong place? I think I am. So wait, at the bottom of the show view, this is the bottom. Ah, so it needs to be non-nullable. Damn, I thought I could make it nullable. Wait, so description not nullable update then we lose everything I think no there it is ah that's strange oh and then you need to say like maybe there is a text 
Gotcha. Okay, so this is indeed what we get. Which means it's a, a check. And we need to do a case. That also makes sense. So our text is case text of. And if it's wrong, capital, you have an error. That's ah, just it's for testing anyway, so. And a right, which means it is there. So we get markdown. Mark dot render. The markdown. Jesus, what is going on? And you may give it to something called T show. <laughs> Uh, pre escaped to HTML. Thank you. So you do the render markdown, which is this function, it gets text, which is your description, if I get it right. Then we check the text. We give it to the parse, so it should give us something back. If it gives an error, no description to parse. If it's correct, it will give us markdown, which we then give to the render. So this is like a function, right? To render with the markdown, we give it to the T-show, whatever that is, and the pre-escaped to HTML. Actually, That's cool. T show. Which is text show. Probably just a helper. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I have this Yeah, it's it's mostly how I work. I kind of tend to pick things up by doing them. Um, like I'm mostly active in PHP and I remember my first job with Zen Framework I told them like I have no experience with Zen Framework um, but my old uh, internship mentor was working at that place at the time and so he went like it's fine I'll teach him and he just gave me like the code base and together with the project manager, they just said like, here are a bunch of bugs. You get a month to fix them, learn how the system works, all of that. And I think I did it in like a week or two because like, give me a code base and I can figure out how stuff works. But then again, I still have this guide here, which also helps. And it doesn't seem like too complicated. So then forms and validation. So indeed we have one line text that's here. And that makes sense. Text field to text area field. Interesting. That's in the edit, but we could just as well do it in the new as well, because it's the same thing. Um, but we'll do it with the edit first, because that's where they expect it. Here we go. So you have your text field for description. And... Okay. So a new one, you say help text. Mark 
Markdown down is enabled. It's not text, but text area field. That's better. Markdown is enabled. Now the question is, you have like text field? Is it like toggle field? No. Checkbox field? <laughs> All right. Much better. Much better. That was so... Actually, this looks a lot like the form types in Symfony. Pretty much. Um, so you can also do parsing in the controller. Let's first take this. Both. Because I want the same thing. And just quickly update this one. So it's also a new, then the controller, we need to import it again. Now I could copy paste, but I'd rather type it so I get used to it. So qualified add text dot mm mark as mark. And then it says, here so we have our validation and it's a custom validator so it's actually a new new function so is markdown which we get a text and we give a validator result so it makes so sense huh? you just have to know what it's called so you get a text, you return a validator result because then it can see if it's correct or not. And so is markdown gets a text like we said before. And then we check mark.parse. No file, but we give the text. And then if it's left, and I guess we do the underscore because we don't care. That means it's a failure. We'll keep this the same. Provide valid markdown. And on the right, we just return a success. And I guess these two are validated results. actually pretty cool to do and then we can do a validate field so uh, validate field and then yes I do still need to make it non-empty I didn't do that last time and then validate field description and just call the yeah it's marked that I wonder if they go into how to take this and like pull it out, put it somewhere, I guess in your application, because it's going to be logic for your domain. Well, it's not really for the domain, but it's something you re could, re could reuse. Like that you do this inside your controller, I can live with because it's your controller that uses it. But like this, you could like have a different thing. Say next to to do, you built like a list. Then you would like to have Markdown as a description of the list, but we'll see. Maybe they still do it. So we did all of this. That's nice. Create a new post with just hashtag. Headline with adding text to see our new error message. Oh, ah, yeah, okay. Wait, did they say?
Okay, so this markdown. And then indeed, please provide valid markdown. Yeah, application would be a good place to put your helpers in a real project. Yeah, that's what I would thought. Because they also said in the beginning, like application is your domain logic stuff. So I figured that would be the place. Maybe they still do it later, I'm not sure. But it's probably just creating a helper, importing them, and then you can use it here, probably. If they don't do it, I'll probably try it. Just to make sure. I right, just to test. Comments. Could we add comments to to do? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's do somewhat the same. Because sometimes it's weird to do stuff different. Like they talk about post and then I look and I'm like, I don't see post. All right, I'm doing a to do. All right, so you go back, comments, and then I added to do ID, author and body. Add table, comments, add column, to do ID, which is a UAD references to do. That's nice. Does it automatically? Uh, what else does it need? Author, just text, probably. And I don't like to use body, I just use comments. Kidding me? Thank you. Can you actually select text area? Like something big What do you have? Date double, timestamps, pools. Okay, text. Automatically set up. That's nice. By default, the foreign key constraint has it set on no action on delete. Click the foreign key post next to the post ID. Oh, cool. Let's leave it like that for now. So I have to update the DB. Was it not ready or was I too fast? No. All right, I still need to add the controllers and stuff, yes. Go gen controller comments preview Generate. yep and then we have a comments here I'm gonna close some other stuff down it's gonna be much. okay now we need to do some adjustments makes sense. Open the show.hs. And we're going to add a new comment action, add comment to the code. So it's here. href. Then, of course, new comment action. Comments. And I'll probably show later how to uh, show the comments. We'll do it step by step. So it creates an add comment link, which links to a new comment form. And we can see this. We can see there's a post ID field, which is a field with lots of zeros. Yes. So that works. Cool. 
We will fill, no post to this ID, let's make it post. Automatically set web.types. And we can see the definition of the comments controller, which is this piece. And let's add a new comment. All right. So we're gonna pass the post ID. We have to do to do to do ID. Which should be nothing else but the ID of a to do. This is why it gets confusing now. That's fine. But that also means yeah, we need to add it manually. So is it inside the brackets? Yes. It's the wrong one. It's this one. Get the ID of the to-do. It's lower. So this is a new comment action, and we give it the ID of this to-do. That's nice. It makes sense. Not a type error can be found in comments index. In this object, we have a new comment button at the top. It also makes sense, but where is it? New comment action, ah, it's this one. Because you cannot do it from here. Because you don't have the post ID. Unless you give the list of all the to-dos in my case. But I don't know yet. Well, I know I could fetch them. But then I don't know how to pass them to the view. At least not yet. So we did that. Now there's another one. None in the new. And add the missing post ID in the pattern match line 14. So in the comments controller. Ah, that makes sense. We don't tell it, it gets a post ID. It's po uh, well, in this case, a to do ID. And now we probably have to change it so your comment has that to do. I'm guessing, right? Maybe it works automatically. I'm not sure. It's still running. Fail to open. Still a pair missing. In the root of support. Wait, did I forget something? So the new comment action has it to do a yes. Ah, maybe it's my uh, yeah. It's because I'm on this. That makes sense. Because it won't work. Okay. Add comment. We see it up here. Yeah. That's good. But we don't have it there, and indeed we set it. That all makes sense. So set to do ID to do ID. Last statement in the do block must be an expression. So equals do let comment new record pipe set to do id to do id. I didn't call it post, did I? No, to do. So it's on the comments, 
must be an expression. It's 15, that's this one. Did I forget something? something weird from my editor it is why does it do that ah, okay so it might just be the indentation yeah if I do two, it works. Okay, that's something I have to remember. Because here it just works with one. So, but okay, fixed. Thank you. And then indeed we have this. That's nice. It's called to do ID, right? Yeah. Not very human friendly. So we have to do and in it we fetch to to do id it's running our new view in our case we also have to update to create comment action great comment action is here so left comment do Ah, I see. Okay. So indeed, we need to pass the post because it uses the new view. Cut. So again, fetch get hashtag to do ID. Um, from the comment. Which is, is, is this, is this dash dash part of it? Oh, wrong one. Okay, let's see. few comments new it's this one you can do data new views new view comment and then oh, uh, to do does that fix it almost there's still something wrong here to do ID from the comment Maybe I do have to do this. Do I have to do this? No. Is this like a... Oh, I forgot to do. Of course. Then it won't work. Now I get something else. Face of new view not initialized. To do. Namely new view. In a statement of duplo render new view. Do post fetch. Okay, let's take this step by step. Okay, double dashes is also comment. So you have the left comment, so that means it fails. For the create comments, so we do a to do why did i choose to call it a to do <laughs> anyway that works that's good 
The view has been updated to have a comment and a to do. So it's passed. Now we can use the to do to show the post title. Okay. So it's in show, right? Wait, no. Was it in show? I think in new. New. Because it's new comment for laser queue. And then we have to get to do of to do. New comment for build the Haskell to do it. That's good. And then in the render, to do ID. Let's also make the text field for post idea hidden field. So that's here. Because we're here, we render. And then um, to do is a hidden field. And then we should see new comment for author and the comment. That's good. Yes, indeed, I called a post. <laughs> because I was thinking like, it's easy to follow something like this. So I want to do something different, but it gets confusing because you're like reading the guide, which talks about post, but you have to do. So it's a bit, I have to keep my head with it. So that's pretty cool. Make it a hidden field. And then we have the same. And then we add a comment. Um, great. And then we see this. Yeah. The weird stuff again. Well, actually, it's just uh, the comment. But then it's full object okay we can see a to-do ID that's this this part that's good now let's change the create to make it redirect to our to-do makes also sense so comments create redirect to comment section and that needs to go to the show post. And you need to give it the post. So, uh, see, now I do it again. It's show to do. And I have to give it a to do ID. And I can get the to do ID from the comment. Hey, thank you for following Huge Peters. Thank you for the support. Much appreciated. So I love how you can do like Korean comments and then redirect with something and then get the value from your object. What I am wondering, how much can you chain? So say you have like a to do with a comment and a list. So you have a list, the to do is in the list, the comment is on the to do. Could you do a redirect to the list when you add a comment? Not that you would do that, but just theoretically, could you do. Technically, I think you can, right? So it's like you first do this, so this part. But instead of comment, you do like, you get the to do. So to do equals I is the, but now you need to fetch it. Never mind. It was just a train of thought. 
So we go back to the to do's. Something is broken. Record update is ambiguous. In the first argument of redirect 2, namely show to do action in a statement of a do block. Did I forget something? Redirect 2. Ah. It's... Oh. Did I just go up? It's probably this. Better. So, add another comment. Testing the redirect. So I should go back to my to-do. Great. Yeah, indeed. There, that one wasn't really clear. <laughs> like, why is it breaking? But I figured it out. That's good. So it works. And now we're going to show the comments. So if you have show for your to-dos. Add a comment, diff, get the comments of the to-do. I was almost writing post again. So that gives you everything, the objects, I guess, though I'm not seeing them. Am I missing something? Again. Get comments. What to do? And it says it should display something, but I'm not seeing it. Wait. There it is. No. Is that what I am supposed to see? No. Got different here. Comments. Maybe it's because I'm doing something different. Yeah, outdated. Okay. Because it still looks like it's what what they say, but it's just more Plain as cool. Okay. So it says the query. Wait, let me read this quickly. So it's a technical representation of the query, but in this case, it really shows the query. Uh, okay. Representation changes a bit between versions. But we don't want the query, we want the comments. So we cannot do this from our view because it should be pure functions without IO. Makes sense. Just showing stuff. So we need to tell the action to actually fetch them. So we need to update the type signature, tell our action what we want. Right now we have the post, in our case, to do. We also want the comments. That's a pretty weird syntax. So we say for the to do, include the comments, but give us the to do. I would expect it to do the other way around. So we have a to do, which is of type to do, which includes the comments, but okay. That's sugar on your syntax. Okay, we're not passing the stuff yet. Yep. 
That makes sense. So we need to go into our controller of our to do's. This one. Because I have limited space, I'm going to close the others for a second. So we're in the show. It's this one. Fetch to do ID. Okay. And then we say fetch related. The comments. Reading this makes sense. Sense. So you have a to do, which you fetch through the to do ID. But then this syntax is new to me. But okay. So you say fetch the related comments. That makes sense. That part is super clear. So this is an as many include the related records and fetch related to specify. Did my mic just crack? If it does, please tell me. You heard nothing? Okay, that's good. Because we had issues with the mic. So I'll, I bought the new Elgato Wave 3, plugged it in during the first stream worked perfectly and then the next stream it starts cracking but what i forgot is during or between stream one and two i switched the hub and so when you put it on usb 2 well the previous usb version not the three it starts cracking but now it's usb c and uh, as long as it's not cracking, it's good. So the operator, so this one, it's already pretty advanced. Okay. But at least we've seen it now. So in this case, we know what to do. That's good. And when opening the show, you will see comments are displayed. Again, in this object form an array of comment comment that makes sense and then we get to show them so still keep a diff and then a for each makes sense of the get comments And then you do render comments, which is probably something like this at the bottom. I'm sorry. Cable management until I have something better. And then we do the same. So you do render comment and it gives it comment. And then you work with the HSX which makes sense diff but we're showing the comment object again so we should have oh wait forget the pipe different comments I forgot to close my diff better so now indeed we see that's no longer an array but different comment objects it's good and then what do they propose to build what is your impression of the haskell syntax thus far actually i have to say it's really clear there's not much that i feel like is weird um of course they use different stuff than php which i'm used to but it all makes pretty much sense i think it would be easier for me 
if um, I did something like React, at least for this part, but the controllers itself actually makes pretty much sense because you have actions, you call them, you, is it prepend? No, how do you say it? That you put action behind. It's the same as what we do with Symphony Framework. And then you just say it does something, you query something. To me, it actually makes pretty much sense. And then your view says what it expects. So that's pretty much, except this part is stuff I haven't seen before, but it's probably like you have an instance of a view, which is your show view, which uses a helper, I guess. And then it says where, what needs to be done. So far, it's pretty okay. Do I already see myself writing something from scratch? That's a different one. But to work like I do now, eh, it's super okay. Do you work in Haskell every day or? Indeed, it's it's not complex yet. So if that's the goal of IHP, good job. I think it's really, really doing what they said, like helping you teach Haskell, Haskell while already building an app. It really does. Ah, cool. seems they changed up because when I was uh, I didn't do uni but I did high school and we saw like .NET, Java um, and then PHP but PHP was very limited so they focused mostly on Java and .NET and then you get like some fun stuff at the end like Blender building 3d stuff but that depends on what you choose because you had two years and then the third was your um, specialization and I went for app development and like a friend of mine went for networking and the networking guy saw like Python and in-depth Linux but yeah we never saw st stuff like this but we did do um, basic and um, what's the other thing called again? Super old. Uh, I can't remember, it escapes me. But we did all of those weird stuff. Very different st stuff from each other. And the reason they did that is because you learn to deal with different languages which have different workings which I thought was pretty cool like Java is way different than .NET and then you also saw Java Beans which is again very different but it teaches you that there are like different ways of doing stuff and I love that So it shines when making stuff like compilers and creating your own type systems. That's cool. Also done a quite a bit of .NET. Yeah, I, I like doing .NET, but I don't know. The reason I went with PHP is at the time you could like change like a line and immediately refresh your page and see it instead of having to compile and all of that stuff. I just wasn't a fan of waiting. But, you know, if you choose for money, 
then I would have chosen .NET. <laughs> you just earn so much more from what I hear. If I keep that between us. But like, yeah, I have a friend who started freelancing two years after me. And like, he started at a higher rate than what I was at at the moment. That's crazy. But I get it right. There is like um, this weird negative vibe around PHP in business worlds. You can't imagine working with a large project. I only do large projects. The thing is with PHP, because it's so low entry, you can either make something really good or really bad. And a lot of people do option B, which is sad because it gives this weird vibe that everything is bad. Okay, so I changed the render comment. We now take each of the comments with these for each. Pass them to the render comment, which is this part. And then we create a little HTML, which is the H5 and the P. Okay, that's cool. But for PHP, I work with Symfony. Laravel is also a good one. But Laravel has a lower entry level, so that can also lead to not so clean practices and code. But yeah. So this is what we're at. We're kind of the same, but with to-dos. That's nice. Ordering comments. Let's change this newest. Ah, oh, yes, to create it. Which automatically adds, which is nice. Update the DB. It's good. Um, so that means in the show post, show to do's, because we get the comments. We have to say that they need to be ordered. Okay, so we do something new. So it's somewhat the same. We still fetch related, but first we say pure. I don't know why yet. Modify. Okay, okay. I get it, I get it. So what I think we do is we say the pure item that we get, so your to-do, which is this dot, just represents the to-do, I guess. Modify it for the comments, because we want to do the following. Order by descending on created at. That makes sense, right? So you get your to-do in its purest form. I don't know. <laughs> I hope it's like this. Um, so the modify comments basically just as a pipe or the by to the query builder inside the comments. Then it just writes back to the field. So I guess the pure means take the QL, SQL. The query. Oh, not this one. So Haskell pure. Function is called pure if it corresponds to a function in the mathematical sense. It associates each possible input value with an output value and does nothing else. No side effects. Okay.
Okay, so pure is used because it expects an IO action, but modify is a pure function. So pure wraps it in IO. Got it. It's weird that they don't say it here yet, but I understand they want to keep it more basic and so skip some stuff. So that gives us this first and then the redirect on top. And that is the rough understanding of IHP. Start building ticks, take a look at the basic section. Well, I have to say, they really did a good job. Start. That's pretty cool. Oh, they follow me. That's nice. That is really nice. I didn't even check my social yet, but that's cool. What's that thing? Ah, uh, it's just... There we go. That's pretty cool. And? It's actually... Oh, you got here by them. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> also, they also have a Slack community. There's so many communities. Like, my Slack is like... And then Discord is like starting to be the same. It's crazy. But I actually might do that. I really want to do more different languages than PHP. Because it really makes you think about stuff. It's nice. If you do too much of the same thing, you get like rusted. And... But that's cool. So, almost 10 o'clock. Which is great because that, oh, 11, 11, 11 o'clock CET. So my stream is almost done, which is nice because we just got at the end of this. Next week, no, this Thursday, we'll do Tech Thursday. So Tech Thursday. And I hope my commands are still working. Cool. So that's for this Thursday. I already got a list of cool stuff. And then next Monday, I might continue on this one with Haskell and see what's in the rest of the docs. Maybe doing some stuff. Maybe look at like, I don't know, improving stuff. Like this is something I said before, the controller stuff. So yeah, I might continue on this next Monday, like make it a bit nicer. I have the checkbox on front. If we can do that, I have to check. We'll see. So recap. Ah, oh, thank you, huge Peters. It's a nice compliment. I think it's because I really love doing these kinds of things. Like just building, figuring out how it works. I don't get upset by that really fast. <laughs> Even if I'm not finding it and there are errors, I'm like, okay, cool. New stuff to learn. And I hope that people watching either learn something 
or find it entertaining, especially when they see me struggle. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you can follow me on any of the socials. And normally on Twitter, I always um, I always say what I'm gonna do that day. And then the cool thing is, I ordered some new gear, so I might also do some game streams. I bought the game capture for the PS4, and I might do those as well. But if I do, I'm gonna put them in the schedule so that people know when to come watch for what. If you don't like games, you can skip those, stuff like that. But it's all still ideas, trial and error. I think this is only my fourth stream. So yeah. So quick recap. We worked with IHP which teaches you Haskell by having a GUI. And actually we didn't see that much yet. We had our schema and our code generator, which we only used for the controller. So I'm not sure what the rest does. Maybe we can play with that next Monday. You also have your data, but that makes sense. It's just the data. Uh, I have no idea what REPL is. I click it, but doesn't do anything. Apparently you have logs. That's nice. Didn't see that yet. Flinting. And the deploy documentation. Anyway. So next Monday, I'm going to dive deeper into this and hope I still remember everything. I see. So the REPL is an interactive Haskell shell. Cool. So we built this app, a to-do app. You can add new to-dos, have comments, add descriptions in Markdown. So we used uh, third-party plugins. I hope I say that correctly. We linked two entities together. So that's pretty cool. Oh, super huge tank, huge Peters. Thank you for the coffee. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna quickly find a streamer that we can rate. So let's continue with the vibe. I said follow, right? Yeah, categories, science, technologies. Who do we have? I'm gonna quickly change this. There we go. So I'm gonna find someone that we can raid. But who? Um, would you guys be interested in interested in Python? Bit of Python programming, but then I'm not sure what he's doing. It's a game dev. It's also interesting. Give me a second to find someone interesting, which isn't always easy. I want to support uh, people like me who are just started streaming, so low viewers. No, someone who's doing something cool, but doesn't have the uh, the views yet. But there's like a lot of weird stuff. 
in there. Here, someone is doing React. Mm. There are actually a lot of channels in here. Christ. Okay. Rating. It's not the easiest. the this one all right that's it for me i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you either thursday for tech thursday or next monday for more see you then bye bye